It has been some time, but I'm back at the Goodwill bins. I just finished at the Goodwill bins, and I came back with a bag full of stuff. So join me as we go digging in that deep blue plastic sea. We are back at the bins. I like to give you a view of what shopping at the bins is really like from finding nothing to finding things that I enjoy and to finding the occasional big scores. Bingo. Of course I got those cards. So yes, you gotta dig, you gotta move things around. There are bits and bobs and pieces of things everywhere. You even find passports, not real, obviously. Probably used for some company or school. So these are bins that had been out from the previous day. They had not brought out the new bins before. I was hoping to find some old recipe cards in there filled with recipes, negative. So you have to dig. Not everything is pretty, not everything is put together. You often find a lot of broken items such as this poor carousel horse. But if you have the time, take a whole day and sift through the blue plastic sea. I still have to do that myself. My time at the bins usually ranges around probably two to three hours. Sometimes the bins are just rejects from the Goodwill store that haven't sold, and other times they are fresh donations. This little Cabbage Patch lady, I didn't like her. If I wouldn't have had my 80s party yet, I would have picked her up for that, but her reselling price is probably $10 or less plush. There weren't a lot of plush this day at the bins. Plush can do very well depending on what they are. I did find many photo albums. All were blank, not filled, of course. I'm still waiting to find that full photo album at the bins. You have shoes, you have unicorns, you have toothbrushes, DVDs, CDs, birdhouses, just an assortment of items. Pillar to post, bags, purses, lots of fake flowers. I think the worst thing to sift through at the bins are the fake Christmas trees. Those are awful because they get everywhere. So I did find some pieces of ephemera. This is the American Freedom Train. It celebrated the bicentennial. I actually found these pieces uh, assorted in the bins, but I lumped them all together to show you as I was filming. Found a check. I think it was for 60 some dollars and then we even found some vintage Halloween so these were a good find for me what sells best for American Freedom train well the trains of course a variety of trains are out there including showcase cars locomotives and other Lionel HO scale trains ephemera items do not seem to bring or hold the same value as the trains, the bottom of the bins is where you find some interesting things. And I found not one, not two, not three, not four, but a little pile of vintage swizzle sticks, perfect for swizzling and stirring your drink. Now, is there money to be made in swizzle sticks? Yes. Am I walking away with $100 bills in my hand from these swizzle sticks? No, but it was still fun to find them, gather them up and save them. Swizzle sticks can be a difficult sale. Large lots tend to sell better on eBay, or if you find sticks from now defunct businesses such as Pan Am, those can command more money. Glass swizzle sticks also sell better than the plastic variety. Another collection that I came across were Barbie clothes. These were assorted, no Barbies though, but the clothing is from the 1990s, probably mid to late 90s, you can tell by the tag. And I just went through and gathered up as many as I could find. It came away with a large Ziploc bag full of Barbie clothes. So these should do fairly decent online and a lot and they didn't cost me that much money. In the world of clothes, I never film when a fresh bin of clothing comes out. I like to focus and see if I can find those elusive vintage t-shirts. But you can see, it's a lot to dig through. Some people push the clothes back, some people bring them forward, some people go right to the bottom, some people just skim the top. But there are a variety of ways to dig through clothing at the bins to find what you are looking for. I did come away with a few vintage shirts, including this Joe Camel shirt, which was the best of the bunch, a champion, and even a vintage single stitch Reebok shirt. So vintage can be found, you just have to dig. The t-shirts I found are mostly in the $15 to $30 range. Not all vintage t-shirts are going to be worth hundreds of dollars. 
Joe Camel was definitely the best shirt that I found. Joe Camel does have his spot in the collector world with lighters being the best sellers. Books, books, and more books. We have an older dictionary and then I spotted this ledger. I love these older ledgers. Now this isn't from the 1900s, 1930s. It is from a ladies auxiliary in the 1960s to 1970s. Naturally, I was not going to leave this there. It is great to use for junk journalists or scrapbooks. Even if it would have been empty and not written in, I still would have purchased it. So I picked up that. And of course, I was not going to leave the dictionary behind. And that's a wrap. Not making thousands, but showing what a typical bins day is like. One never knows what you are going to find in that deep blue plastic sea. And that is definitely what keeps us coming back for more.